Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Meta Cafe. Grab your cup of coffee or tea, sit back, and let's chat about the astrology for not only today, but we'll take a look at the week ahead through Western astrology, through human design, and we may even pull a couple of oracle cards for the week. And I think, uh, as I am really wanting to learn the Pleiadian Earth energy astrology and have us live within that, we'll take a look at what the week brings for that as well, if we have time. So I hope everybody had a wonderful Mother's Day and a wonderful weekend. It was beautiful here in the Pacific Northwest. We spent a lot of time outdoors with family and at uh, lacrosse games. I'm not sure if anybody out there knows what lacrosse is. I didn't until my grandson started playing it. And it's, it's just a wonderful activity. The kids, you know what I really love about lacrosse? is not so much the game because the game's fast and it's sort of crazy with kids running. It's sort of like soccer meets hockey. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of crazy. But at the end of the game, this is the part I really love, is that the kids have something called an honoring ceremony, or uh, I, I know it has another word, but I know it has something to do with honors. And both teams line up facing one another. And three people are chosen from each team to present the other team with an honor. So if they noticed a particular um, person who was doing really well, or if there was a particular person that was having a hard time, but then, you know, overcame some kind of obstacle, they honor that child, the, the kids honor each other. It's so fabulous. And of course, the coaches also do the same thing. They talk about how about the home team and then they talk about the visiting team. It, it's just a really, it, you know, for sports, you know, we, we often think of sports as being sort of competitive. And at times, you know, there's there's violence and anger erupts and conflict within the the, the games. But in a game like this, where at the very end, the kids can come together and do that, it was, it's quite it's quite something to watch. And I always enjoy going to uh, the center circle of the field when they do that. So to me, lacrosse, interesting game. I don't know if they do that, if, if there's competitive lacrosse out there in the world. I don't know if they do that or not, but they do do that here locally when the kids play. So anyway, interesting. Well... We have an interesting week using the word interesting, maybe a little chaotic, maybe a little crazy, um, not a bad week in that, you know, there are some, you know, big things to have to watch out for. It's more like there's this conglomeration of things that are happening. Like every day, literally, as I was looking through the um, the week ahead, uh, I, I was like, wow. So singly, you know, each day may not be that crazy, even though it is. But taken together, the whole of this week is highly energetic and, you know, whipping us almost from one kind of thing to another, whether it's Venus or Mercury, the Sun and Pluto, minor aspects that are happening just underneath the surface. Have you ever gotten a splinter in your hand or your finger and you can't quite get it out or a paper cut? You know that a paper cut almost hurts worse than any other kind of cut you get. And it's just irritating and annoying, right? Because maybe it's on your fingers and every time you go to wash your hands or something, you open it back up. It's that kind of thing that these minor aspects this week are also doing. Just providing that little bit of irritation underneath the skin or that little bit of irritation in the form of a cut. It's not major, but you'll notice it and it can be irritating. So there you have it. That's the major focus for the week. The purpose of all of this isn't to make you mad or upset or angry or to, you know, just drive you nuts. There's really a sense here this week of our coalescing into something new and moving ourselves forward. You know, we're, we're building to the full moon at the end of the week. I think it's on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday's the full moon. So we're, we're kind of focusing in. It's like being almost, you know, brought to the point of a chevron uh, or, you know, pushed through the eye of the needle, you may hear some people say, about if we want to move forward in the light and lighter than what we have been, then there are some things that we have to shed, right? Things that we have to let go of, that may be the most irritating thing is that things that you may have been wanting to hold on to really tightly are being, you know, kind of ripped away or let go of. 
it's not a process of hurting you. It's a process of letting more and more of the real you come out and play and shine. So there you have it, right? A nice week. But in that process, there's some chaos. And in that process, there's conflict. And in that process, there may be irritability. That's another word. I noticed it in myself this morning. A moment of irritability where I've had, you know, days going through just kind of nice and smooth, you know, wonderful feeling, buoyant, feeling uh, optimistic. And then this morning, it was like just something got under my saddle, right? <laughs> and it was just irritating me. Uh, I don't know what it was. And it's since passed. That is kind of the, the week that we can expect things popping up and then just releasing and moving on. So let's say good morning to everybody out there. Hello, Camille. It's great to see you this morning. And Asa, beautiful to see you. Patricia Woods, good morning. And Mimi, good morning. Rebecca, good morning. It's great to see you all out there. And those of you I can see in the background uh, who haven't checked in with us yet, good morning to all of you. So let's jump in because I, I there's a lot going on today. And it's interesting because when you when you begin to put together the energies of a week, often a theme pulls out and it, it sort of makes itself known. And the theme this week for me was definitely this idea of chaos. Uh, what I didn't expect was when I really got down to the nitty gritty, there was just this the number of things going on just today that are going to, you know, take us on into the future. So let's let's break that down a bit. First of all, today the moon is in Virgo, one of my favorite placements for the moon. I have my natal moon in Virgo. So do you, Mimi. And I'm sure there are others of you out there listening who have your moon in Virgo. It is a day where you can get things done, right? It's practical. It's organized. It's down to earth and it's detail oriented. Maybe the caution is don't get so deep into the details that you can't see the bigger picture. That's one of the things that can happen with Virgo, the moon in Virgo, is that you get so lost in the details, the minutia, that you forget to come up and breathe and see how all of that fits in to the bigger picture. So you'll want to make sure you're able to see both the wider view and the narrower view. But today the moon is making a lot of different connections with planets, Mercury, Saturn, Neptune, and Jupiter. So let's break those down a bit and see what that means for us for the upcoming uh, week, but especially for today. The moon in Virgo is an earth sign and Mercury right now is in the sign of Taurus, also an earth sign. So when we have a planet in trine with another, we have a smooth flow of energy. It's almost like there's no miscommunication going on. It's just flow. And both in earth signs, the element of earth is grounded. It is resourceful. It is everything that we think of about being stable and structured, its form, and the two of these planets together help us to bring our communication, Mercury, into alignment with our emotions, the moon. So today we can speak from an emotional standpoint, but we can also do that in a way that makes sense and isn't over the top emotional, right? It's not that you're not able to speak to the emotion, or to uh, express emotion, it's that it comes across as a more practical, simplified, down-to-earth kind of way. Now, also, the uh, moon is in a trine with Saturn. And Saturn is a planet that loves simplification. You might remember last week I told you that the human design sun was at gate 23. Let me show you what gate 23 is in a human design chart. Gate 23 is right here on the throat center. And it is moving up to meet gate 43 in the Ajna. And as you can see in this chart of today, it is the only thing that we have defined in this chart, right? The only channel that we have defined, which is the 4323. And it is the sun and the earth that are completing that. It is the gate of brilliance or the channel, excuse me. I call it the channel of brilliance, breakthroughs. It is, it is where your emerging genius and brilliance lies in your chart. Now, if you don't have those gates normally, now they're suddenly defined. You may find yourself, you know, coming up with great ideas, seeing things in a way that you haven't seen them before. But the overall theme with Saturn's involvement at this particular, um, in this particular trine is about simplification. The sun at gate 23 is about simplifying. 
simplifying our lives. So letting go of all of that frivolous stuff, the, the fluff, the, uh, the things that you think you need in order to move forward, but that when it turns out, when, it, when you really look at it, it isn't helping you at all. Or it is, you know, more like a drag on you as opposed to something that's helpful. So today we have this really great opportunity to take a look. It might be a project. It might be your overall life. It might be in a way that you're doing something. The It may be that you take a look. I, I'm just looking outside at my uh, garden and I've been gone and I, you know, the days have gotten warmer and my uh, weeds have taken over and I'm looking outside going, oh my gosh, I have so much to do, you know, with my work, but I also need to get out into that garden. And now I also realize I have to protect my skin and oh my gosh. So all these things start going through. So simplify this, Janet, break it down, maybe do one section, right? Take a break, come back in, do some work, break that down, go back outside, do another little section. You don't have to look at the whole, you can also break things down into bite-sized pieces. And if it's not important, then you can just let it go let it slide. I may have to let those weeds slide for another week until I can finish a project that I'm in the midst of for the energy almanac next year. And when I can finish that, then I'm free to move on. So we're all shedding, shedding, right? My cat is shedding. Your dogs, your cats are shedding. You may be shedding. You may be finding your hair falling out because it's that time of year to simplify. Now, the moon is also in an opposition to Neptune today. And when the moon and Neptune come together in any way, shape, or form, there's often this eruption of intuition that comes up from deep within, or you may feel like, in fact, today, it may even feel more like this, where it's an aha, uh, a sort of crystallized form of something that comes in, but without the manual that tells you how to break it down. <clears throat> Wait for simplification to occur. Don't worry about it, right? This whole idea may come in. I, I, I can't say how that's played out for me yet personally, um, but I know for a lot of people when the moon is in this particular area and today it's sitting at the gate 64, gate 64, just so you know, is up here on the head center, right up there. And the gate 64 is where information, the, you know, it's at the interface of spirit and, and matter, um, your, your spiritual soul, your higher self and your, um, your earthly self and information comes in, you know, like a, you have this antenna and, and the antenna picks up something and it brings it in. When it brings it in, it brings it in whole and fully formed at gate 64. And it needs to wait for more energy to come in to break it down and uh, give you the instructions on now, what do I do with this? So don't be surprised if you get these grand ideas or these big ideas, but without any idea of what it is you're supposed to do with it. And that's okay because the rest will come. So today, interesting day with Neptune. There may be ahas, epiphanies, revelations, um, uh, a sense of being in receipt of information that you don't yet quite know what to do with it rest assured, the rest will come, right? It will come. The moon is also squaring Jupiter today. So just a slight little warning. Um, be sure that you don't overdo things, right? Don't get, don't get out there in your garden and work for hours and hours without taking a break, because your back may pay for it tomorrow, or, you know, your skin may pay for it, or any number of things, right? So all things in proportion today, now, those are the just the moon's connections today, right? That's just the moon. Now, let's take a look at some of the minor aspects occurring during the day today. And then we'll take a look at the biggest energy that is occurring later in the day and also into tomorrow. Uh, that sets us up for some very powerful things happening for us in the week. So we have some minor aspects. Now, you guys are used to probably hearing me talk about oppositions, conjunctions, squares, sextiles, trines. These are the things that are the more common um, <clears throat> transits or relationships between planets that we talk about. The square and the conjunction kind of being irritations, the trine and the um, uh, sextile being smooth and the opposition sometimes being, you know, one that pulls us in two different directions. Well, there are minor aspects too that serve us to sort of energize things from beneath the surface. Today, 
Mercury and Mars are in just such a relationship with one another. Mercury rules our voice. It rules our conversation. It rules our minds. Mars rules the actions that we are going to take, our forward motion. And Mercury and Mars are in a semi-square to one another. A full-on square is a 90-degree angle, a relationship that we know is very challenging. A semi-square is a 45-degree angle. It is also like the first hints of irritation about a, something that's a, a challenge that you're facing. <clears throat> it's kind of vague. It's not right in your face, right? Like this morning, how I described that I was feeling this sort of vague irritation, but I wasn't sure this irritability that I wasn't sure where it was coming from. I couldn't pinpoint it to a thought I had. Um, I, I realized while I was making my bed this morning, you know, sometimes when you're in the middle of doing something, it's when these ahas can break through. I realized it was old thoughts, something old that was coming up in my mind. Um, you know, old tapes running, old patterns being presented. And I chose in that moment to let them go. That may be when the irritation and the irritability sort of slipped away. But you may have other instances of this that bring up this sort of impatience. I want to get to where I'm going and I'm impatient. Um, I got to tell you something funny this morning that happened. My husband rode his bicycle to work this morning. And as he's walking out the door, I thought there's just something off. I don't know what it is, but there's something off. And I didn't know how to, I, I didn't know what to say about it. And I, because I didn't know in my conscious mind yet what it was. So I, I made sure I told him, you know, be very careful out on the roads today. Just, you know, be safe. So he gets about a mile away from home, turns around and comes back home because what he'd forgotten was his safety vest, right? The bright yellow orange thing that with the reflector tape on it that tells everybody, hey, I'm bicycling here. And so he came home to do that. Such is the irritation that is born out of that sense of impatience, right? I need to get out the door. I need to get on my bike. I need to get to work. But I forgot something, something important. And that may be kind of that turnaround. Got to go back and do it again. So be aware of that. It may just help you today to slow things down right before you head out the door, take a look around, make sure the coffee pot's off, make sure, you know, you didn't leave something plugged in that you didn't want to. Uh, not because something bad is going to happen, but it could create irritation later. So it's one of those kind of days. Now, another minor aspect, you've heard me talk about a quincunx. It's a really interesting word, right? Q-U-I-N-C-U-N-X. Say that 10 times fast, right? Um, a, a quincunx part is a part of a yod. Now, we don't have a full-on yod going on today, but we have one side of a yod, which is the quincunx, and that is between the sun and Jupiter. And here's where another irritating factor may come in for you. And I think this one's going to be an irritating factor maybe throughout the week. You may be grappling with this one for the week. And I call this one a tale of two choices where you're at a fork in the road. And I could go this way and expect, you know, certain things to happen. And it might be a really good way. But then there's this other choice over here and it's equally good or equally um, possible. But now I have to, I'm sitting down here, right, at the irritation of which direction do I go? You know, this path holds this one, this path holds that. Neither one are, neither one necessarily better than the other, but it is irritating nonetheless because we don't like to have that kind of thing happen to us, right? We like to know for sure that the steps we're going to take next are the correct ones. And we always then worry when we come to a tale like this, a tale of two choices, should I have gone the left direction instead I, I went to the right? The way to work through this is to really understand who you are right, to really understand your truth and who you are authentically. A, a day like this, a transit like this is where knowing your human design hands down will save you, right? Because if you know how it is that you're designed to make decisions, a fork in the road like this comes easily. 
right? The answer or the solution comes easily because you know you have a feeling if you're intuitive, let's say, then you have this knowing that this, this direction to the right is the correct one. If you're emotional, you, you've waded through your emotional wave and now your body is in synchrony with a certain direction, one or the other. If you have sacral authority in your human design, it is the very powerful, yes, the tug that you feel pulling you in one direction, um, while your mind is the one that wants to create the, yeah, but that one might be better or yeah, that way. And once you make the decision, then your mind gets in there and says, but yeah, should have gone that direction. So be aware of this, right? <clears throat> if you don't know what your human design authority is, it's an easy fix because on my website, you can go to get your free human design chart, www.living-astrology.com. There you go. There's my website. Get your free copy of your human design chart. It comes with a report. For those of you who have already gotten your human design chart in the past, before there was this report capability, you can email me and I will happily send you a report, right? So some of you have done that. Um, a lot of you haven't. So if you want to get your human design report, it's just a, it's very minimal, but it gives you some great ideas about who you're meant to be. And also gives you the information on how to get a reading so that you can find out more about who you are designed to be and how it is that you're best meant to make decisions. So you can go to my website and get that. Um, let's see what else is happening today. So, okay, well, let me finish that one up. The sun, the sun and Jupiter are two forces for growth and good in our lives. They're beneficent. The sun is the force of your personality. Jupiter is your path of growth and optimism and luck involved in a bit with Jupiter. So these two aren't trying to irritate you so much as your mind getting involved and creating that irritation between do I go left or do I go right? So just be aware, right? Um, let's take a look real quickly. Comments. Is anybody experiencing this already? Maybe something came up over the weekend or you know you're facing something like this this week. Let's talk a bit about that. Good morning, Vicki. I hope you're feeling well, girlfriend. We are sending you waves of love and light and healing energy surrounding you with all of that. Good morning, Elisa Garcia. It's good to see you. Debbie Tibbetts, two meal. Good morning. She said it makes sense. She's tired today from the weekend. It was a great weekend. Irina, good morning. Hi, first time catching you live. Well, welcome. We're glad to see you out there. Vanita, good morning. And everyone else I've already talked to. Let's see any other comments. Kathy Miller, good morning, my stepmama. Good morning, everyone. Can't stick around too much to do today. Interesting what to do today, clean house or work in my yard. Hope everyone had an awesome Mother's Day. That is the power of the moon in Virgo, Kathy, is that it presents us with this opportunity to clean up to organize, to reduce, what was it I used in my blog post? Reduce, reuse, recycle. It is one of those kind of days, right? What can we do? Uh, let's see, Irina says, yes, confusion is real. I also have my moon opposing the current moon. That is your personal full moon then. So you are at a point of completion, releasing and or revealing something to you, right? Something that's been hidden from you. The full moon does that for us. All right. So let's go on to <clears throat> later on this afternoon. Perhaps the biggest effect for us beginning this week is Sun Trine Pluto. The Sun, again, the force of your full personality, um, your your light, right? You, what you're good at, what what you're drawn to. Pluto is a planet that that takes us through transformation energy, but it's transforming us to empower us. But that empowerment process doesn't always feel very good to us because sometimes we've got to dive through, you know, the dumpster dive, right? You got to go diving through the muck that is there in order that's, that's holding you back or that has stopped you from moving forward in a very powerful way. So when the sun comes together with Pluto in this way, we can very easily see where it is that we have 
what has been tripping us up. And we can choose here. We can choose either to move through that onto the other end. And even if we're dirty, when we get and tired at the end of that road, we feel good because we've surmounted the problem, right? Or we've gone through it. Um, but it is also a place where we are empowered to live our truth. You know, Pluto energy, wherever it is in your chart is a place of power and it's almost a hidden power. So when, when I look at Pluto in someone's natal chart, now remember Pluto is out there ways away. So it is a generational kind of planet, meaning that for several years, it is in the same sign. So I'm part of, let's see, I'm 57. So those of you that are, were born probably from about 1957 to 68, 69, you were born when Pluto was in Virgo. So we are the Pluto in Virgo generation. So Pluto is both generational for us, but also personal. So whatever house that Pluto is in for you is where your path of empowerment was, is, lies, right? So <clears throat> it is where your most hideous problems may come up, yet it is also the place where the jewels can be found. So Pluto is important no matter what astronomers try to do in reducing his power or, you know, demoting him. He holds a powerful place in the entire pantheon of planets in your chart. So we're talking about empowerment, but we're also talking about the, the journey to get you to that empowered place. And it may take you through some stuff, right, that you have to release, let go right? So um, the sun in Taurus right now and Pluto in Capricorn, both earth signs. We're talking resourcefulness. We're talking conservatism in a way, right? Being good stewards of your time, of your energy, of your resources, of your money, of everything in your life. And in order to advance your goals or to advance your dreams forward, you have to simplify your life in some way. You have to let go of what's not working. You have to let go of the things that are holding you back. That might be psychological things. It could be fears. It could be, it could be a job. It could be a person. It could be any number of things, but you're going to have to work through that in order to move forward. And it becomes very obvious to us what that might be. In other words, we are taking now this possible road of being proactive. That's the big key here is that we can proactively move ourselves forward. It isn't just going to happen. It can happen just as if by magic, but that magic doesn't happen unless, of course, you've set the intention that that magic can happen. You have to be willing. You have to be open. You have to be honest about what it is that you need to let go of in order to move past your stuck spots. There's also something else quietly happening here. <laughs> Maybe not so quietly for some of you. I've noticed it's quietly coming up for me. And that is finding your personal path of service, your personal niche, if you will, your sweet spot, if you will, the spot where you are at your best. So, and I'll give you sort of an example. I'm an astrologer. I do human design astrology, now Pleiadian earth energy astrology. I do oracle readings for people at times. I do um, uh, human design. I do gene keys. There's these things, right? These things that are all a part of astrology. And that's huge. But if I pare it down to what it is that I'm really good at, it's about bringing these things to people and helping you to understand how it works for you personally. So my little niche, then I would say, is that I can make this livable for you, living astrology. I can teach you how to live from those things like trines and <laughs> and quincunxes and um sun trines pluto etc right so i try to break these things down so each one of you has something that you are a part of but in that is your path of service or your uniqueness your unique ability your unique sweet spot and it's up to you to find that and live from that 
right? Because we can't all, I mean, I, I read articles from other people. I have lots of people that send me astrology articles and I find them fascinating. And then I find myself getting irritated because I didn't write that article. It's really kind of an amusement to me, really, because I really love, I absorb all that information. But I also realize I'm not here to write those epic articles. I'm here to read those epic articles and break them down so that you can understand them. So find what it is that you are meant to do in that way, right? You might be an artist like Mimi. Mimi's an artist, but she has this specific little thing that she's been working on. And uh, silk screening, textiles, that kind of thing. Not silk screening. I'm probably using the wrong words, Mimi, and I apologize for that. But I've watched her, you know, go from, you know, this artist to finding this little niche, this thing that she's really good at, that she really loves doing. Focus on those things, right? We can't be everything to everyone, but we can be our specific path of service, we can live from our specific sweet spot and share with everybody from that spot, from that place. That is the power of the sun trining Pluto, is letting everything else go in favor of the path before you that is easy, that you love, and that you seem to have an affinity for, or you just seem to have a brilliance about. That's where you want to head. So if you're at that fork in the road, the sun uh, quincunx Jupiter thing today or this week, go with the side that pulls you because it's part of what you do best or what you love to do. Okay, let's see some comments popping up here. Mimi says, thank you, painting on silk. <laughs> I knew it wasn't silk screening. <laughs> I just couldn't think of the words. So thank you. Uh, and keep going because that's your sweet spot, Mimi. It's a place that you love. Now, your sweet spot may not always be that way, right? Um, she may at some point in the future decide that she wants to, to do something else. One thing sort of leads into the next, perhaps. But, you know, the, the thing is to find what it is here in this moment that is your niche and where you shine. Okay. Um, good morning, Linda. Uh, it's good to see you. Camille says she's Pluto in Virgo. Colleen is, yes, she has Pluto in Virgo. She has Pluto in Virgo in her first house. So here we get differentiation, right? All of us that are Pluto in Virgo generation from, like I said, 1957, 1958 to about 1968, 69, we all have the energy of Pluto in Virgo through our collective. Note that this is a generation that brought in recycling that uh, is very earth centric. Not that others aren't, that's not my point at all. It's just that that generation is faced with the big problems of, of uh, trash on the planet, of plastics, of how do we recycle? How do we sustain ourselves on this planet, right? But where each of us has it separately is where we are shining. So Colleen, because she's just brought it up. She has it in her first house. She is here to present herself as the strongest self that she can be. It's a personal path of transformation for her. As she's moving through dark nights of the soul and back out into the light again to really bring up the best of who she is and to live her life on her own terms, letting go of what everybody else says that she should do or who she should be. Um, my guess is that there is there are many transitions that Colleen will go through in her life because she is shedding, constantly shedding. So anyway, there we go. Um, Camille talked about that. Linda, Linda, Linda. Asa, how do you find those keys about yourself within yourself, your niche? Great question. There's a lot of soul searching that goes on here. If you could step back from yourself and observe, just become the observer. What is it that you love to do? What is it that you could do all day long and not notice that all of the time is gone? What is it that you like to be? Who is it that you like to be? These are the things that are going to kind of cue in. Note what it is that you always do. What is it? What is sort of your default setting? Like if people, 
when you're doing this or you're being this way, people go, wow, this is so cool. You're, you know, this is really you, you're really in your power. That is a clue as to what it is that you're doing that is specifically your niche, right? So clues, you've got clues. You, you could look in your astrology chart, find where Pluto is in your chart. You could look in your astrology chart and find your North node. The North node is huge because it's your destiny. It is telling you to move in this direction, right? So lots of clues and soul searching. This is, this is something where an astrologer comes in handy, right? We could look at that. We could show you the obvious that you're missing, but when you start to distill it down to your niche, if you will, um, and that has to come from within you. What is it that you're really good at? What is it you really feel like you're having fun doing? What is it that you want to keep doing? What is it that other people always tell you you are so good at? Then you'll know, right, that you're in your niche. Uh, Diana Ballgard, good morning to you. Vicki, I feel like you are talking to me personally. This is what I so need to hear. I'm having such depressed feelings and this is helping. I go to the oncologist tomorrow for answers. Well, <clears throat> Vicki, we're all facing this, right? If one person is facing cancer such as you are at this mo moment in time, we all are. We all are because we all have the potential within us to express it that way. You're taking one for the team here, so to speak, in a way, because now we get to love and support you through what could be a trying time. But you also get to choose how you move through this now, right? How do you, how do, how are you transformed by the experience that you're about to embark on? And the power lies with you right? I don't know what the final outcome will be. But I do know that it's what you do right now, that sets the tone for that as you move forward. And the intention could be to move through this with ease and grace. And you always remind yourself of that every time your mind wants to take you to an oh, you know, a, a spot of, uh, of wound or pain. You could say, but I'm moving through this with ease and grace. My intention is to come out on the other end with some vast knowledge of myself, of how wonderful a tool my body is and how easy it is for me to heal. The choice is yours. The choice is each of ours. The choice is each of, uh, each of ours. But, you know, the choice is also built upon what your soul's journey is. And that part is a little harder to see, right? Maybe, you know, you came to the planet with the express reason of experiencing this, maybe either to provide a, a healing for other people, you know, a path through maybe through you journaling your experience, what, how you can help others. We don't know that. That part's a little bit hidden from us, but your role right now is to intend what happens and how this is going to be experienced by you. And it's absolutely natural to feel depressed or to feel melancholic. Be okay with that. Just don't let it define you. You can, instead of saying, I am depressed or I'm sad or I'm upset, be, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. Don't make it who you are, but make it what you're feeling because that's genuine. You aren't your depression, you aren't sadness, you aren't your, your cancer diagnosis, but you are this beautiful human being who has a lot more power to affect her healing than you know. It's amazing, right? The body human is amazing. All right. Um, so I hope that helps, sweetheart. If you need anything, you just reach out to us. We will be there to help you, support you, guide you if necessary, or just to be a shoulder for you to cry on or anything that you need. You just reach out and let us know. Uh, Mimi says, exactly, Janet, I've oil painted, watercolor, felt painted with fiber and now silk in that order. Who knows if something new will arrive in the future with art. Just be open to that, right? That's the power. Where's my Pluto and Virgo? Vanita says, I have no idea. But Pluto kind of looks like a P in the charts that um, I've given you. So look for the P. Um, my guess is, Vanita, I think you have a Leo rising. So it's probably in your second house, maybe, or late in your first house. 
So take a look in that area of your chart and look for the P. It looks like a P with a tail on it. Um, Colleen, well, that's so very me indeed. And, you know, a, like a snake sheds its skin, right? In order to grow, a snake has to shed its skin. And I'm not saying you're a snake, <laughs> but it's a great, um, it's a great metaphor for what's happening for you in your life is that you shed your skin, right? It breaks apart and you leave that part of you behind and you move forward. And then that too cracks and breaks apart and is shed and you move forward. That's your life, right? That's what you came here to do with that part of you. Uh, Asa, so helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Camille, Pluto, Virgo in the 11th house. Now your Pluto then is putting you in a very powerful position to affect communities, to affect tribes, to affect groups, to affect associates that you have. Your very presence is probably a transformation to the groups that you're a part of or to the people that you play with, your friends and associates, basically. But also the 11th house holds our dreams and our visions, and you probably hold a very powerful vision of transformation for the planet. And the fact that Virgo is up there tells me it would be about living more holistically, more organically, living more in harmony with the earth. And maybe who you align yourself in groups are um, environmental groups or healthy um, um, uh, eating groups or feeding the planet groups. I would love to know where your series is because that would also tell us some information about how it is you're here to help the earth. Um, Cam uh, Camille. Irina, very helpful. Thank you. Uh, your Pluto, Irina's Pluto in Libra. So you're that next generation over right? Your Pluto in Libra is in the 10th house. So Pluto in Libra is holding a completely different energy than the Pluto in Virgo generation. So you must have been born either late 1960s or early 70s or into the 70s because the, actually, I think my daughter even has the moon in Libra. I mean, the uh, Pluto in Libra and she was born in 83. So but 10th house means the focus becomes that on career. You like pulling yourself up from your bootstraps and claiming your authority in the world and harmonizing and balancing that through uh, the Libra Pluto. Um, Camille House 11, social and intellectual security does sound accurate. Awesome. Kristen, good morning. Diana. Lovely. Vicki, thank you. That does help so much. Love it. Good morning, Lynn. It's great to see you. She said she picked card 44. Teamwork for us today. That's awesome. She pulled that from the 64 Faces by Rosie Aronson. Love that deck. I keep forgetting to bring it out here because I've now moved up to the front here so I could write better. I forgot to bring that deck up here. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I had the opportunity to use the word synarchy this weekend. Now I can't remember why. Oh, no, it was last week. I was talking to uh, Pia, and, Pia, Cullen, Pia and Cullen from the Pleiadian Earth Energy Calendar. And they were talking about this idea of teamwork and I, and releasing hierarchies in favor of synarchy. So Lynn, thank you. Perfect, perfect, right? It's a team. We are a team, right? We're, we're working together. And when we work, when we can work together, when we can pull together, then we can create so much more right? And I think that's why we see, you know, our world in such chaos out there, because we're not working together. We're 7 billion people pulling in 7 billion different directions, and forgetting that we're also part of a collective of humanity that needs to pull together in alignment with our values to work for the good of the whole. It's amazing. All right, so uh, I don't know where yours is, Diana. I don't have time to look up charts today, but you know, look, if you have got your personal chart, look for the P that's Pluto, right? And the little pie piece that it's in is going to tell you the house that it's in. Benita says, yes, Leo rising second house. Um, you and I share that we both have Pluto in the second house and that is about empowering you financially, but also it's about looking at what's most important. What are your most important resources and focusing those, bringing those into focus for you in this world, in this life. 
Uh, Irina was born in 1978. That makes perfect sense. Camille, interesting, often said what the group would not say in order to help the group. There you go. Totally resonates with me. Career is a hot topic in my life this year. Must be. I think a career is in focus for a lot of people this year, simply because Saturn and Pluto, both in Capricorn, no matter where that is in your chart, in the natural chart, in the natural order of the chart, um, Saturn and Capricorn rule the 10th house of career and profession. So it's focusing you in a specific direction in your personal chart, but collectively it's meant for you to express out in the world as your authority, your personal authority. Um, <clears throat> Okay, Camille, that's awesome. She says love, or she says, yes, I want to help people currently through selling real estate, working into developing my higher calling of hypnotherapy, always wanted to help others. You know, I would say helping people find home is a great job, right? That's a perfect thing for you to be engaged with right now. Uh, Rebecca, she has Pluto in the 10th conjunct Saturn. Wow. So your life is really in transit transformation right now. Um, that's a very powerful connection and it mimics what's happening right now in the world, right? Because pretty soon here, January 12th of 2020, those two become conjunct again. This happens pretty much about every 33 to 38 years, depending on, you know, the cycle of time. But so that makes it rare that people are born with Saturn conjunct Pluto, but here we are coming up to another Saturn conjunct Pluto. And it's a powerful call for you to claim your, your authentic path, your, your authority in the world. So uh, Lynn Goldberg says lit card 44 gift of teamwork, doing what you love, trusting you attract the right people and relationships. When you found your true team, your destiny will naturally and magically unfold. Of course, there is so much more. And also smelling the people who are right for you. It's hysterical. I have gate 44 defined in my chart. And I sometimes smell the weirdest things. No one else smells them. It's weird. But that, that gate has a lot to do with the olfactory senses. Okay. So while I would love to keep going on people's different Plutos, what have you, I have one more thing I have to share with you today. And that is about the planet Mars. You know, Mars is winding down his trip through Gemini and will soon move into the sign of cancer. In fact, that even happens this week. Um, on the 15th, Mars moves into cancer. So we are sitting in the 29th degree or so of um, Mars's, Mars's journey through Gemini where we've had a lot of actionability, right? There's been a lot of, maybe a little bit chaotic, a lot of ideas, a lot of different directions we could go. And, you know, we sort of flourish with Mars in Gemini. And now we're moving with Mars into Cancer. Now we have to bring some, it's so that that card Lynn is so perfect because now we have to sort of bring it into a focal point. Cancer, energy, and Mars. Think of this, Mars is fire, Cancer is water fire and water creates steam. Um, it, it creates energy. It does create its own brand of, of forward momentum, but it's more contained. And in that it's more focused. So here is another reason why we would want to find our niche, our path of service, because cancer is going to allow some of that uh, extra stuff to fall away so that we have a focus. And then we may move a little bit sideways to get to it, but we will get to it. It's going to slow the roll for the next six weeks or so, up until July 1st, I think it is. So expect that, slowing down. But I, I thought it was where Mars was in um, human design that really kicked it for me. And today Mars moves into the gate 15. So I'm going to show you where the gate 15 is. It's on the identity center. Gate 15 is right here on the edge, and it leads down to gate 5 in the sacral. Notice it's hanging, right? Now, if you happen to have gate 5 defined, you're suddenly going to have the entire channel of rhythm and timing defined. Now, the, the gate 15 is part of the codon ring of seeking. 
Here is where we're seeking our path to service. Here's where we're seeking where we belong. Mm. Where we're seeking our uniqueness, right? Where we are, our niche, right? So everything that Sun Trine Pluto is bringing up for us this week, Mars is echoing in the placement of it in your human design. And it, the gate itself is called the love of humanity. It's one of the four gates of love that sit in the identity center. The, it's either a white diamond or a yellow diamond in your human design chart. It is your compass, right? It's the compass that, it is called the magnetic monopole. I know that sounds really goofy, right? It's the G center, the center of gravity in your body. And as such, it pulls you in a direction, in a certain direction in your life. The direction we're being pulled into now is the stream of our particular service, the path through which that we are here to serve humanity. Because the gate of love here is about the love of humanity, right? And it's for the love that we feel for our fellow human beings, the compassion that we have for our fellow human beings, that we go out into the world and do what we do. So there's two components, right? We have the path that we go down because we love it. We love how we feel. We love how people react to us when we're doing that kind of work. We feel good. But on the bigger picture, we do it because we love that. That is how we are um, um, uh, helping our fellow human beings. It's our contribution to our fellow human beings. So it's a path of service but it's also a gate that brings into uh, effect rhythm and timing. And we always say in this channel, we always think that we have control over timing, <laughs> but we don't. Timing is a function of being in the right place at the right time with the right opportunity when spirit calls you. And we can't force timing. We can't make it happen. You can do what's in front of you, right? Being in the now, right? You follow what's in front of you and you find yourself in that right place, right time, right people, right opportunity. But when you're pushing or when you're forcing, you can find yourself out of lockstep with that kind of energy. You can find yourself out of sync with timing. You can find yourself out of alignment with the people that you suddenly find yourself around. So our tendency to be impatient and to push Mars is an energy that likes action, and maybe not so happy at gate 15 because it's about rhythm and timing. But it's also actions taken toward finding your path of service. Where do you serve, right? Mars action. And in human design, Mars is often thought of as a planet of maturity, meaning that in the beginning, in your younger years, it's often expressed immaturely as you might expect, right? If you if you have one of the wealth gates for your Mars, let's say, that your lessons involve wasting of money, scrapping, scrapping for money, and scraping, you know, whatever it is that, you know, that, that journey is at the low end of the frequency. And over time, you learn how to value money and how what its worth is and how to make it work for you. So wherever Mars is in your human design is a place where initially, at least, it's immaturely expressed and over time becomes a, a master, a mastery of expression. So we can look at this now in terms of Mars sitting at gate 15 for the time being as finding that path of service and maturing it, right? Bringing it into full expression. And this is a pathway right? That means, it, you know, most of us here in the morning are, I would say, in our, you know, 20s to 60s, right? So those very productive years. And some of you may be at the, the younger end of that, trying to find your path. Some of you are more in the mature side of this where you found it, and now you have to learn how to express it more and more. And those of you at the latter end of this have found that role and have moved through it. And maybe now you're at your rest time, and you can sit back and, and look over your life and see how you've moved through this energy, how you contributed to humanity. And I'm not going to say rest on your laurels, but be a, a role model for others about how to do that same thing. I hope that makes sense. So Mars is bringing us a lot of different energy here over the next 
couple of weeks while it sits at the gate 15. If you have gate five in your natal chart, and you'll know it because it'll come up from the sacral, gate five is right here, down here, and now this will be connected for you for several weeks. Um, let me caution you, don't push. Don't make things happen. Just be in the moment because in every moment you'll get the nudge as to what direction to go, whether it's right timing or whether it isn't the right time to do something. I hope that makes sense. Uh, anybody? So Arena, she says, cool, that completes a 515 channel for me. And five is her personality son. Your whole life, Irina, is about the right time, right place, right people, right opportunity. No forcing allowed, right? You can't force yourself to be something in the moment that you're not. Um, it's all about timing for you. And there's luck here. Those three channels, by the way, these three that connect up to the, from the sacral up to the um, identity center, all three of them, 515 and uh, 14, uh, 2 and 2946. They're, they're called tan tantric channels. Tantric channels because they're really about timing and about being in the right place with the right people at the right time. There's luck involved here if you relax and just go with the flow instead of fighting against the flow, right? Tantric energy is really about being in that flow and allowing that flow to open up from you and come back to you. So there we have that. Um, yay. It looks like everybody's excited about what's going on. I know sometimes it's a little daunting to find out that we have these major things going on, especially in a week where we have one after the other. We didn't even get to talk this morning about what's coming up through the week. We have, uh, Venus transits. We have one, two, three Mercury transits. We have Venus conjunct Uranus later in the week. Um, it is definitely a week. Venus moving into Taurus, Mars moving into Cancer, lots going on this week, and it may be pulling us in different directions, up and down and all around. Stay your course, follow your instincts and your intuition, use your authority and your human design to make decisions if you're faced with making decisions this week, and everything should turn out just right. Let's take a look at a card here. Thank you very much for um, pulling that card for us, Lynn. I'm going to just pull a Wota, Wisdom of the Oracle, for us for the week. We also have a full moon this week in Scorpio, no less. Not that I don't like Scorpio, but it's intense and it's passionate and it's deep. Scorpio is a sign ruled by Pluto, by the way, and Mars, right? Two of the big players this week. So isn't that interesting? And we get deep knowing and it's upside down. Card number 43. Well, that's interesting since that's where the earth sits this week. So deep knowing in protection. So let's take a look at what that means for us. Now, what did I do with the booklet? Card 43. So the card itself means intuition, listening to the oracle within, empathy, and hypersensitivity. And in... <clears throat> protection, it says, you are in empathy overload and need to get grounded again. So tune out for a bit. Hypersensitive, you're suffering from psychic exhaustion. This signals the time for a recharging of your batteries. Set energetic boundaries, take a bath, no, take a salt bath, empty your mind and get back to you. It's not a time to be too open. Soon enough, you can let your guard down. Right now you need self-care and self-love. It's time to say no thank you to anyone in your life who exhausts you. Won't that feel good? And, you know, there are several ways. Everybody's different, but there are several ways you can go about grounding yourself. For me, sometimes it's going out there and getting my hands into the dirt. It's, you know, planting, trimming, pruning. For some people, it is a bath. For some people, it's eating good food. For some people, it's taking a walk down by the water or in the forest. Whatever it is that grounds you, get into that. All right, so that'll help us through a chaotic week. All right, everybody, thank you so much. I see my phone is triggered here, so I'm hoping that means that some of you are um, 
sending out for your chart and your report so that you know what your authority is. That would be so exciting. Um, one last thing, I just wanted to let everybody know I have something special for all of you coming up here in June. It is, I'm, I'm part of a Change Your Mind, Change Your Life Summit. And it is 11 women that will be coming on with their wisdom to share with you uh, over the course of, I think it's 11 days, 11 women, 11 days, something to that effect. For my part, I am going to be bringing you Change Your Mind by Releasing Your Dependence on Your Mind. It is going to be a talk about the Ajna, the second center in your human design, and how it is that we can move, how and why we need to release our dependence on our minds in order to be free to live authentically and in our authority. Um, I do believe the summit is free uh, because that just seems to be, if I remember correctly, you will not be paying for it, which is awesome. And every woman is presenting something for uh, a gift during the uh, summit. So I'll be giving you more information on that. The marketing information is being drawn up even as we speak. And I will be free to present that to you here shortly. And I believe that comes up through the week of June. I just know I'm on June 13th. And I was like the second to the last day. So it must be like June 9th through the 14th. So kind of circle that week on your calendar and be watching for details to be coming up on that. All right. Good morning, Heather. Lovely to see you. And I hope you had a happy Mother's Day as well. And you're most welcome, Irina, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I hope everybody has a wonderful week. Reach out if you have. I love sharing, by the way. So you guys feel free to email me or in the morning, bring up things that are happening that, you know, fall in alignment with some of the energies that we're sharing. I love that, right? And it helps us all to um, feel like, you know, we're moving in the right direction. So I, I invite you share your experiences with all of us. And in the meantime, everyone have a great day. Mwah! Much love to all of you. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.